Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce Simone Biles. <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys already know this, but at 19, Simone is widely known as the best gymnast in the world. Uh, before the Olympics, she already won the most gold medals in the history of the World Championships. And then at the Olympics this summer, she obviously won three gold medals and won bronze. Uh, Ali Raisman, her teammate this year, said that Simone's just in her own league. Whoever gets second place, that's the winner. And Simone has been compared to Usain Bolt and Michael Phelps, but in, Simone wor in Simone's words herself, she's the first Simone Biles. Uh, and her story outside the gym is just as compelling as the one inside of it. And she's here tonight to talk to you about that, uh, along with award-winning journalist Tracy Matisik. So please join me in welcoming Simone and Tracy. Well, hello, everyone. I know you're not here to see me, but we are all delighted to see Simone Biles. How about a nice Philly welcome for her? <laughs> If you know this, but very recently, Simone was named the Associated Press Female Athlete of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and Simone, I'm sure that um, so many of us, you know, we watched your performance in the Olympics. Absolutely amazing. What has your life been like since then? Um, it's been pretty chaotic, to be honest, but all the cool opportunities I've gotten to do has been such an honor. Um, but it has been crazy. I wake up in places and I'm like, oh my gosh, where am I? But other than that, for the most part, it's been good. So been you busy. Well, you wrote in the book about 100 things to do after 2016. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing some of those things? Um, yes, I actually have. I have gotten to go horseback riding, go ice skating, go swimming with sharks and stingrays. Um, so I have crossed off some of them off the list, so that's pretty exciting. I heard something about you dropping in on Dancing with the Stars not too long ago. Is that true? Um, yes. Last night I went to the tour stop in Lancaster, so I got to see Lori and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, your book is called The Courage to Soar. Who did you write that book for, and what do you want your readers to come away with? Um, I guess I wrote it for my fans and everyone else that wants to get inside and my life just because they've heard the stories so many times from different reporters or people online writing, but they've never heard it from me. So I thought it would be special to write it from me, to hear it from me, because I'm the only one that knows it the best, you know? So. Simone, you have had to make so many sacrifices, right, to compete at the highest levels of gymnastics. And there's a point where you talk in the book about coming to a crossroads, homeschool versus high school, you might say. Yes. Um, talk a little bit about the trade-off that you made and how you arrived at that decision. Mm -hmm. um, I was really torn at the deciding factors of doing college or professional because I didn't think it was quite fair that the boys get to do both because their gymnastics career, they mature much later and the girls have to choose collegiate or professional. But once I sat down, I was like, you know, I wouldn't want to regret the opportunities I'll get if I go professional and I'm successful rather than just go compete on a college team and look back at it and be like, oh, well, I could have been professional. I could have done so many opportunities. Um, and I felt like I can always go to college um, even if I don't get to compete. Maybe I can still compete four more years, maybe not at the collegiate level, but try for 2020. Um, so that's kind of how I thought of it, is I could always go back to college, but I can't always go back and choose professional. Yeah. Was it tough, though, thinking about just doing normal teenager things, right? Going to the mall, um, the movies, <laughs> the prom? Um, yes, it was hard, too. I've never been to a school dance ever, um, so I never got to go to prom. My sister says she's going to ask me. I'm probably going to tell her no. <laughs> it's way overdue. Um, but I've never been to any of those things, but I feel like competing for my country is a lot better than, no offense, what a lot of other kids get to do. And so they can't ever say, well, I got to compete for my country, and I can. So I think that's a little bit better than going to a school dance, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a pretty good trait. Yes. Yeah. So, Simone, in, very early in your life, you and your siblings uh, were in foster care. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? And we may have some young people who here who are in foster families um, just interested about what you might have to say to them. Um, growing up, I was in foster families, and 
it didn't really scare me too, too much besides like going to sleep and waking up knowing if my siblings were going to still be in the same home with me. So like we had a boy's room and then a girl's room and my brother was across the hall, but I was kind of attached to him and I was terrified like we weren't going to be together. So I would like sneak in his room and sleep in there with him and they would get of course mad at me, but I was like, well, I can't lose my brother or like my siblings and I would have my sister at the hip all the time with me. But other than that, it was a pretty good experience because I got to be with my siblings and then my grandparents would always come and visit. So everything I remember was very positive. Um, so it was all good. Yeah. What would you say to um, young people who are living in foster families yes. right now? Um, I would say to never give up and always stay hopeful because the odds aren't against you and anything can happen. Yeah. So then your grandparents actually yes. adopted you and became yes. your mom and dad. In fact, your mom is here yes. with us tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wave your hand, Miss Nellie. Very <laughs> yes. So tell us about your parents and how yes. they shaped your life. Um, my parents are the best things in my world. They always tell me yes, no, for the best reasons or the not so best reasons. Um, typical parents. But other than that, I remember um, my dad telling me once I was adopted on the plane ride from Ohio to Texas, he's like, you wouldn't stop smiling. I was like, is something wrong with her? Because like, my sister cried the whole time on the plane, first time on a plane, but I was just like all smiles like a crazy child. <laughs> <laughs> So you were living in Ohio originally, but then you yes. moved to Texas to live yes. with your parents. Yes. And how about your biological mom? Are you in touch with her much? Do you talk um, to her? She calls on the holidays, and we talk to her, and she sends us, like, Christmas presents and all that stuff. But other than that, it's kept pretty low um, just because she has other kids now, um, which are my siblings as well. But yeah. it's just, like, keeping it low. Yeah. You talk in the book about um, not only the triumphs that you have faced, but also some of the adversity, right? And one of the challenges that you talked about that really seemed to make an impact on your life was the Visa National Championships in 2011 in Minnesota. What happened that day, and what did you take away from that experience? Um, is this one? Okay, so in 2011. Okay, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> is this with the coach? Yeah, this, yes. well, this was the one about whether to do that particular... Yes, the skill. Move. Okay, so that's yes. when I did my mm -hmm. national team. That was heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I missed national team by one placement, which is that's when Marta selects you and you get to be on team, travel around the country, and compete for the United States. Um, there was a specific vault that my coach wanted me to do, and I wouldn't do it because I was like, it's dangerous. I haven't um, trained it long enough, so I ended up not doing the the vault and I missed national team by one placement and my coach was like, well, if you would have done it, you would have made national team. So of course I went back to the hotel and I was like crying my eyes out. I remember my brother calling me and he's like, it's okay, Simone, like you'll get it next year. And I was like, oh, I don't want to wait a year. But um, it made me just go in the gym and train harder. And then actually like two weeks later, I uh, did that vault on accident. And my coach was not the happiest because I said I couldn't do it. Um, but I mean, it worked out for the better. I went to the gym and I trained harder. And then next year, I think I was, I placed in the top three. So I made the team. Yeah. So what might you say to other young athletes who might find themselves in a position like that, where they, they're faced with a question, mm -hmm. do I go for broke or do I hold back and do what I think is safer and less likely to result yes. in an injury? Um, I would say to go with your conscious. And at the time I didn't think it was right and I trusted my gut, and sometimes if your coaches are trying to push you, they won't necessarily d tell you to do things they don't think you can do, but sometimes it's like not in the picture, so um, just trust your gut. Yeah. One of the other challenges that you talk about in the book is being diagnosed with ADHD. Um, tell us a little bit about that, and, and specifically when, when you hear that, you wonder how are you able then to maintain such incredible focus in yes. gymnastics? Um, well, growing up as a kid, if anyone looked at me, they could automatically tell I probably had ADHD because I was so hyper. I couldn't sit still for the life of me. I still can't. Um, and my mom's like, can you just sit down? Like, give her something to play with. Um, but it wouldn't keep me interested for too, too long. But other than that, um, me being prescribed with it, it wasn't 
such a big thing. I was like, well, I just need medicine to help myself. So then I started taking medicine. Sometimes I didn't like taking it because I felt different, but I knew it helped me. So that's all that mattered in the end is what I, I knew what I needed for myself. Yeah. And it really made a difference. Yes, it did. Some days my mom could tell if I forgot to take my medicine. <laughs> 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 well, let's fast forward to Rio and the Olympics. How were you able to mentally prepare for the intensity of that kind of competition? Um, we've been on national team. I've been on national team for a couple of years now, traveling around the world and going through assignments and then training camps. So that kind of prepares you for the scene. You never know what it, exactly what it's going to be like because it's the Olympics. It's this huge deal. But I've been to worlds and um, world training camps and stuff like that. And Marta's always watching us, so you kind of prepare for it physically and mentally at those camps because we do the formation that we do in competition in those camps with Marta. So we know exactly what's gonna happen, who's gonna go first, second, third, fourth, and fifth in lineup. So it's nothing new once we go to compete. We just keep it the same as training. So, and when you say Marta, you're talking about Marta Caroli, yes, right? Yes, the national team coordinator who picks yeah. all the teams. Yeah. Um, speaking of Marta, uh, you and your teammates called yourselves the Final Five. Yes. Tell us, first of all, how did you arrive at that name? And then I want to follow up and talk a little bit about your teammates as well. Okay. Um, we were in a group message right after we made the Olympic team. And we're like, well, guys, we have to think of a name. But, like, of course, we can't announce it unless we win the gold because that's kind of, like, the tradition. But we started to come up with one because we just, like, go big, you know. Um, so we were all in a group message, and we were thinking of everything. And we finally came up with the final five because it's Marta's last year, and it's the last Olympic team for gymnastics that will be a five-member team. Um, in 2020, it'll be four members. So we were, like, the final of Marta and the final team of five members. Yeah. How did she respond when you told oh her God. your name? Oh, gosh. Um, so after we won, we're like, okay, we can announce it to the camera and then run over to Marta because we always ran to her for the nod of approval that she always gave. And we told her it, and she just started crying. And we were just like, oh, we didn't mean to make you cry. But she was just so excited and happy. And like we dedicated our team name to her. So that was pretty special. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time training with her at their sort of the ranch, right? Yes. What was that experience like? Um, I think it shaped me into the person I am today because I always knew to never give up and to push 100% more harder than I was already pushing and it really tested my body limits mentally and physically because no matter what, Marta never just picked you for how physically strong you were, it was mentally as well. So she always needed who's going to go up and handle the pressure. So um, that taught me a lot about myself and how much pressure I could handle. Yeah. Is there something that you would say to yourself? Do you have sort of an internal dialogue when you're either in competition, when you're rehearsing at that level? What's the dialogue that goes on in your head to push yourself to take that next step? Um, I just think back to training and think of how many times I've done these routines and then I just tell myself like, you got this, you can do this, you've done it a million times. Um, so I just, and then before I go, I usually just tell myself confidence before I salute mm. and go on the event. And just like practice. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's in the book too. You got to read it. Um, Simone, talk about your teammates and what it was yes. like to be competing alongside Allie and yes. Laurie and Madison and Gabby. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you've got some stories that you can share yes. with us about them. Um, competing with them was a dream come true. I remember watching Allie and Gabby and I think whenever Allie won her floor routine gold in 2012, I was like crying in my room. I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. And I was like, I want to be just like her. So I trained hard, but training alongside of them, I don't know if many of you guys know, but we've actually been training together for five or more years. Um, me and Lori knew each other whenever I was like 13. So that was pretty crazy how we got to be on an Olympic team together. And we see each other once a month for five days for all of our training camps, except for December. So we really are a family. So what you see out there on the competition floor is real. So we just want the best for each other. And they're like all sisters. Yeah. So what kinds of things did you guys do when you were done competing? Were you able to have some fun, hang out? 
we did get to go to the beach. Um, that was a lot of fun and just have like a relaxed day. We got like, well, I know I got a cheeseburger that day. I was like, <laughs> I just couldn't wait. And then me and Allie in the village, we were like, Coach Amy, which was my coach, we were like, please take us to the McDonald's in the village. Like, we just need an ice cream cone. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, but we were always pulling jokes on each other and screaming, going to bed way too late um, in the village. Lori's like, are you ever coming to bed? Because me and Lori would stay up late. Allie would bang on the door, run over. I'm trying to go to sleep. And we're like, girl, you can sleep when you're dead. It's 9 o'clock. <laughs> so we, like, didn't let Allie sleep. And she's like, I'm going to kill you guys. But I mean, it just made good memories. And, like, I'm not supposed to tell you guys this, but, like, in the village they have, like, popsicle things. And you know how many popsicles I had? Way too many. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just couldn't wait till competition was over so I could steal a popsicle. Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say you earned those popsicles <laughs> and the cheeseburger you. and the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Simone, because of people like Dominique Dawes, um, you know, Gabby Douglas, um, yourself, we're seeing what some people are calling an explosion of diversity in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. um, what might you say to young people of color yes. who are interested in gymnastics? They've been watching people like mm -hmm. you. They're inspired. They want to walk that same path that you have walked. Um, I would say to dream big and pick a good role model and watch them because I remember watching Gabby and all of them and whenever I went to a competition, like seeing other people of color, it really did help me and I felt like, like, you know what, if they can do this, I can do this. And then competing at world levels, it did make a difference. And competing with Gabby, that was an amazing feeling. She's like my sister. But to see other people like that, it's just like you just have to dream big and follow all of your dreams because you can do anything you put your mind to. Yeah. So, Simone, for someone like you who is very much in the public eye um, and also active on social media, um, it's inevitable that the haters will show up. And, and there yes. will be people <laughs> who say crazy things. How do you handle that? Um, most of the time I just ignore it because like I think of it as they're just behind a computer writing things like what right, like they must have something better to do um, than like make fun of a 19 year old. So I just kind of ignore it because I'm like you know what it's okay be a better person be the bigger one. Um, so most of the time I just ignore it. Yeah, and I think for a lot of young people, and, and you don't have to be famous to endure yes. this, that I think for a lot of young people on social media, mm -hmm. there is always that risk, yes. right? That people are just going to say things. What w might you say to other young people who, you know, maybe have faced it not on the scale that you yeah. have, <laughs> but are on social media and that's an issue for them? Um, I would just say to keep your chin up and whatever you believe, you just keep to that and don't believe anything anyone tells you because your mind is the most powerful thing you have, so you're the only one that can control it. Yeah. You tell a funny story in the book about the bee incident. Yes. Tell us about that story and, and what you learned from the bee incident. Yes. Um, so in 2014 at Worlds in China, um, there was an incident on the podium, and I freaked out because there was a bee in my flowers, so I was like shaking the flowers, and I'm up there and I'm like, don't throw the flowers down, I don't want them to think I'm rude, but the bee was coming after me, I chucked it, I ran, and then <laughs> it went viral, but I think that day actually like going to the meet, I was like, you know what, I haven't seen one living flying thing here, no birds, <laughs> no nothing, because like it was just so dull in the sky, and I was like, there's nothing here, there's like no flying animals. And then that day, the bee attacked me, and I was like, okay, I got the one <laughs> thing out of China. Like, there was one, and it got me. Um, but it did go viral uh, more than I thought it would, so that was pretty crazy. No one, no one cared that I won the gold. Everyone was like, did you see her run around crazy from a bee? But whenever I started running, I could only imagine what my mom was thinking. Like, what is she doing? And she was actually mad at me. She texted me after the meet, and she's like, what were you doing up on that podium? Like, why were you doing that? And I zoomed into the picture. I was like, Mom, there was a bee. Because she's like, I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so see, teenagers, it's not just you, yeah. right? <laughs> Everybody's mom does yes, that, right? Everybody's mom does it. <laughs> well, Simone, I know that our audience has submitted some questions for you. And we're going to get to those in just a moment. But wanted to save um, the toughest question for last. Because one of the most amazing things that happened to you in Rio was getting to meet Zac Efron. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. here's the question. Which was more awesome, 
a kiss from Zac Efron <laughs> or a hug from President Obama. Oh God, that's so hard. See, every, <laughs> someone said this to me before and it's not fair because it's like two different levels, like meeting the president and then like meeting the guy I want to marry, you see? It's like, <laughs> so it's on different levels, so it's both really cool. So it's like an apples oranges yeah. comparison is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, well, what do you say um, we get to our questions? I think Andy is here and uh, has some questions that you guys have submitted, so. That's just right there. Is he here? All right, well, while we are getting those questions, I'll go ahead and ask a couple of more. Mm -hmm. um, you talk quite a bit in the book about Amy, your yes. coach, and how close you were to her. What makes her such a great coach, and, and what are the ingredients, in your view, for a good coach? Um, I think they really have to get to know you, and she has since I was six to seven years old, um, and she could tell my moods from the time I walked through the door or however I'm feeling at a competition, if she, she, she knows if I'm nervous or what I need. So I think it really is, it takes a person that knows your bond and has a strong bond and knows you as a person before just like you're good at gymnastics. I mean, I think that's what we shared and that's why we did so well because she could always sense my mood, what kind of like type I was feeling that day. And so we really bonded and I could always go to her and tell, tell her everything that day. Like if I didn't feel like I could do the amount of numbers she told me to do, I said, well, can I do this many? And she's like, you know what? I think that might even work better um, mentally so that, because in competition you can't do that many or so like that. So she just really got to know me and it was like, we just had a really good relationship. Yeah. And you mentioned that you met her very early in your life. Tell yes. us, thank you, Andy. Tell us about how you got into gymnastics to begin yes. with. It was kind of by accident, right? Um, yes, it was. I was six years old and it was on a daycare field trip. And that day we were actually supposed to go to the oil ranch, but it started raining and the alternate like route was to go to the gym up the street from the daycare. So we're like, oh, let's just go there instead. Um, and the coaches saw me because I was flipping around, copying the older girls in the back, which were the ones on team. And I just like thought I could do everything they could do. And a coach saw me and sent a letter home and like my parents. Um, asked me right away if I wanted to do gymnastics or tumbling, and I was like, well, I want to do the one with four events, so they signed me up, and I went that week. Wow, and the rest is history. Yes. And there you <laughs> have it. So, well, we have a stack of questions. We'll okay. get through as many as we can. Um, this one says, did you do any other sports as a kid? Um, gymnastics was the only sport I've ever tried, ever done. Um, I'm not so good at any other sports besides gymnastics, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did U.S. Gymnastics give you any coaching for how to do TV interviews? You were able to maintain <laughs> composure under so much stress. Um, not necessarily. I remember growing up, my very first interview, he was like, can you say just more than one word? And I was like, no. <laughs> so, like, they were like, you just need to say more stuff. But um, they kind of, they guide you, but you kind of do it yourself. And I think I'm better at them than I was also because gymnastics was like scary. So I was like, oh, the interview is like, whatever happens, happens. I could say anything. Yeah. If you can do what you can do on a yes. balance beam, then answering the, interview the questions. The was the easy part. Yeah. yeah. Well, this question must be from a gymnast. It says, do you have any advice on how to hold a longer handstand? A longer handstand, um, for like a handstand hold, you can start by using a wall. That's what um, I used to do. And then as you get better at him on the wall, you can start taking your feet off the wall and balancing, but it's there as a guide just in case you want to tip over or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then if you go at the end of the floor and put your wrist, um, like on a panel mat or on the floor or on a springboard, start doing it there so that your arms are the only thing supporting you. And then you veer away from the board and then you just do it like solo. Oh, so when I go home tonight, then I'll know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's, there's steps. So that's what it is, yes. okay. Um, are you scared when you perform? What motivates you? Uh, there's three questions here. And okay. is it difficult to learn new techniques? So I'll let you answer any or all of those. Yes. Um, I do get a little bit nervous uh, competing, but once I salute, I kind of just like blow them all away and I'm pretty good with handling my nerves. So you can't t tell that I'm nervous. Um, and sometimes it is different and weird and like, 
scary doing new techniques, but I meant you have your coaches there to guide you so they don't make it too, too scary. But personally, like, I didn't like ever changing my form, so they had to deal with it. But I have had to along the way and kind of start over. Mm -hmm. um, what was the third question? Thank and the lot. third question was... Oh, well, that was the third question. So are you scared when you perform? What motivates you? And is it oh, difficult to learn me? new techniques? Um, yeah. I think what has always motivated me growing up was the Olympics. Um, it's every girl's little dream of going to the Olympics. So I think that's what always motivated me. I wanted to go into the gym to get better, to go to the Olympics one day. Question about Zach. Has your <laughs> relationship with Zach Efron evolved since <laughs> you two last met? Um, He's so busy, but I do remember on tour, one of my friends knows him really well. Um, so he did FaceTime me. And we were like getting ready for the tour stop, so that was pretty cool. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, he's a busy man, so I let him be. <laughs> well, here's a question. Um, what is the coolest opportunity you've had since your Olympic wins? Um, I think everyone has been amazing. We got to meet the president go to the VMAs, go to the CMAs. I've gotten to go on Jimmy Fallon, um, the Today Show with Hoda. She's like my aunt. She's my favorite. I don't know. I've gotten to do so many things in this week, and I get to go to the Golden Globes. So wow. I head there tomorrow. Awesome. We'll be looking for you. Thanks. <laughs> this one says, hi, Simone. What was the main obstacle that you've had to overcome? Um, I think the main obstacle I've had to overcome, which was getting better at bars and trusting myself on bars because like personally I never thought I was going to do bars it terrified me I don't understand the concept of swinging around a bar with your arms with only your arms like that didn't just that didn't make sense to me and it was scary so I was like I'm just going to be a specialist I'm never going to do bars but I do bars now yeah <laughs> and really well <laughs> thank you <laughs> Did you ever get discouraged being a gymnast? And if so, how did you overcome it? Not necessarily. I remember going to school and like, I didn't really like my muscles because like it was bigger than all the boys and I beat up a boy once because he told me I couldn't. So I beat him up with my muscles. Um, <laughs> I did, I beat him up. Um, but other than that, like, I had to get comfortable with my muscles, so I think that was like the biggest thing. It was never in gymnastics, it was like going to school with muscles, so I would always wear jackets to cover it up. Wow. I bet that boy didn't bother you anymore though, did he? No. Yeah, I didn't no. think so. Yeah. <laughs> this is sort of a similar question. When you feel like giving up at practice or at a meet, what makes you want to keep going? Um, I still think all my goals I've ever written down has always kept me going if I ever wanted to give up or to leave practice or just like not want to do it anymore. I was always like, well, I've trained so hard. It's just one bad day and you'll have more in your life. So you can't give up on the bad days because of all the good days you will have. Mm, that's good advice for everybody. <laughs> Question from Kara. She's 10 years old and she wants to know who's your best friend in the final five. Who's my best friend? Um, I would say all of them, but I do talk to Allie like almost every day. I'm sure she actually probably just texts me if I look at my phone. Um, and then Lori, she's like my little sister. I just love her and like I feel the need to protect her and every time something comes up or I see her on the TV, like I cry. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I like fangirl to the max and I'm like, oh my God, Lori's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so great. What's your favorite skill on floor? My favorite <laughs> skill on floor would be one that's named after me. It's called the Biles, so it's a double A half. <laughs> I think for a lot of people, that's their favorite skill <laughs> now that it's got your name on Thank it. You. Um, who was your greatest inspiration for gymnastics? My greatest inspirations were Alicia Sacramoni, Nastia Lukin, and Sean Johnson. Those are the ones oh. I grew up watching. Okay. Um, how did you handle school and training and getting all your work done? I mean, obviously you were homeschooled, but still, yes. how did you manage all that? Um, it was a little bit rough at times because I always got behind in my schoolwork and I would just cry because like I didn't understand why I was so behind, but it's because I didn't do it because I was like out of the country or stuff like that, but I was like, I don't get why I'm behind, like I was just out for two weeks, but you know, I had a private teacher, so she would always send me with books, um, 
on assignments out of the country and I would always leave them at home because it was too heavy for my bag. <laughs> But um, I, I could pull it up online and do my assignments, so I always had a private teacher that helped me um, so I could get caught back up. So you kind of worked it around your gymnastics. gymnastics. Yes, yeah. but I still did school like three to four hours a day. Okay. And then like if I had homework that night, which I always did. Well, speaking of hours, this question says, how many hours a week do you train? I was training 32 hours a week for three years or more. Wow. Three, no, like four or five years, goodness gracious. So <laughs> <It's> a long time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Goodness gracious. Yes. So how did that break down on a daily basis? What would a day look like for you? So I would come in in the morning. I had two practices. Um, and I would do four hours in the morning so that, like, the gym was calmer so I could use any equipment, any drills I needed. And then in the afternoon, I would train with some of the team girls for three hours, seven hours a day. And then on Saturdays, four hours. Wow, that's intense, but that's what it takes yes. to be an Olympic champion. Yes. Um, what was your worst injury, um, and how did it happen? Um, my worst injury was I partially tore my calf muscle, um, mm. but it was fine. I just had to be in a boot for like three weeks, and then it healed. But I think uh, recently on tour, I broke my rib. Um, but I still did all, I finished the rest of the tour because I didn't know it was broken. It just hurt a lot and I would like cry after shows because I like couldn't breathe, couldn't move and I was like, what's happening? Um, but it was actually doing the biles somehow. The pressure, the pounding just like, just cracked. I was in the wow. middle of the show and I landed and I was like, ah, something really hurt. And I was like running to the corner because I still had the rest of the number to do. And I was like, guys, I'm really hurting. Okay, let me go do my double-double. And then I like wow. did everything, but um, I still finished out the rest of the tour and didn't find out until I got home, like two weeks later. Wow. That's when I finally got it checked out. Oh my. Out. <laughs> so Simone, what happens in that moment, right? At that moment, you knew something went terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not an injury, but maybe it's just a bad landing or something yes. goes wrong in a routine. What goes on in your head to keep your composure when that happens? Well, I just thought like I maybe tweaked it or like I popped my rib out. So I was like, you know what? The trainer can fix it after the show. It's no big deal. Keep going. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's what you did. You just. Well, yes. Yeah. And then later during the number, like my toe cracked and I, there was bleeding everywhere. And I was like, I think I just need to call it a show. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I finished it. And then I was like hobbling off and then it was all good. <laughs> The wow. trainer fixed me. <laughs> wow. Um, this is a question from Cecilia. She is a level three gymnast, and she asks, what advice do you have for a kip? For a kip. For a kip. Man. Swing hard and push your arms up hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to teach a kip because yeah. I got one, mine on one of the first tries. So, like, if I have better advice, I'll figure it out and I'll get it to you. Yeah. Just got to keep practicing. Yes. Right? That's the <laughs> bottom line. Um, we talked about Amy a moment ago. This question says, how is your relationship with Amy different from uh, different than other coaches and gymnasts? Is there something yes. special about the relationship with Amy? Um, I think she's just really gotten to know me over the years. We've been training together. Um, and she always knew what to do to take care of me, to make sure I was healthy mentally and physically so that I do a good job um, whenever I go compete. So she always knew how to handle me um, if I was in one of the moods, how to get me out, or just how to motivate me to do better and practice. Um, and sometimes I remember whenever I was younger, like my parents went out of town, I went to stay at her house so I could still practice and stuff like that. So we just always had a good one. Yeah, she just seemed to have an ability to kind of read, yes. you know, where you were mentally and yes. emotionally and all of that. Yes, and so. she never pushed me too hard because I would always push myself harder than I needed to. Um, so she's like, okay, Simone, like, it's fine, you're fine. Yeah. Um, this question comes from Sylvia and Carter, and they want to know, is your sister an athlete too? And P.S., we love you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I love you guys too. Um, my sister was... An athlete she quit last year um, in the beginning of the year before a season because um, it was just getting a little bit hard for her she was going on to level 10 um, and she didn't just she just didn't like it anymore and the fears got in the way um, so as she calls it she retired she didn't quit she retired <laughs>
Um, two questions here from Gia. One is, what two events are your favorite, and what's your favorite song? Okay, so my two favorite events are Floor and Beam. Um, I don't know, I just like really like Beam. And then my favorite song, hmm, what is my favorite song right now? I have too many favorite songs. I can never pick a favorite. Yeah. Too so many of like, them. Yeah, huh? it's just too many. I have so yeah, many. Yeah, a lot of good ones out there right yes. now. How about a favorite artist? Do you have a favorite artist? Um, I really do like Justin Bieber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a I Justin like Bieber the fan over smokers. there. Um, Drake, Rihanna. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have some people who agree with you out there. Um, if there was a sport that you liked other than gymnastics, what would it be? That's from Haley. Hmm. I think ice skating looks really pretty, and I wanted to be an ice skater whenever I was younger. Um, and like track, I feel like I could run really fast. I don't know, but I'm pretty short because I've stood next to the track runners, and they're kind of tall. But. <laughs> I'm thinking you'd be really fast, too. I think you could do that if you wanted to. I think so. Um, Sarah wants to know, what is your favorite movie? Ooh, my favorite movie? I really love scary movies, um, but I do like chick flicks. So, I don't know. Okay. Any particular one? I have so many. There's just so many. <laughs> um, the Other Woman. I really like that one. Okay. I think it's hilarious. Okay. Any favorite actors other than Zac Efron? Okay, Don. <laughs> or other actresses? Than, other than Zac Efron, Dave Franco, Jennifer Lawrence. Are those some good ones? Okay. Channing very Tatum. Good ones. Oh, yes. She's good looking too. <laughs> There's some Channing Tatum fans out there. Yes. If you could be any animal in the animal kingdom, which one would you be? I feel like. My spirit animal is like a honey badger. <laughs> like those animals are crazy and I feel like I'm pretty crazy. <laughs> like they do anything, so that's my, definitely mine. <laughs> well, here's a question from Audrey. And Audrey says, how does it feel to know that you are an idol for so many people? Aww. Um, to me, it's an honor because I remember being younger and looking up to my idols and just thinking like, wow, I just want to be just like them. So I think it's amazing how I can be a role model for those kids to look up to me and like, especially whenever they're wearing my Leo, it's just like the cutest thing, my heart melts. <laughs> Does that feel like pressure at all to you, Simone, knowing that um, so many young people are looking up to you and older people? Yes, um, to me I don't feel so much pressure. I feel like it's an honor to have, to be a role model. It's just a good thing. Yes, yeah. it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so similar question and, and a follow-up. Um, considering your life, how does it feel to be where you are right now? Um, every day I wake up and I don't believe all the opportunities that I get to do, how I get to come speak to people, do signings, and like go to cool events. So my lifestyle does seem like a dream come true. I feel like a little princess every morning whenever I wake up. Um, I'm sure my mom say I act like one, but it's whatever. <laughs> um, so I really just do feel like I'm not in a real world living because yeah. how great it is. Yeah. Simone, you write about your faith in the book and how important it is to you. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Yes. Um, so in Rio, I was like, I was a little nervous. So I swear I took everything I had with me, like Bible, my Saint Sebastian, and I would like always make sure it was in my pocket or something because I was like just needed to pray all the time. Um, but it is really important to me. We go to church every Sunday whenever I'm in town with me, my mom, and my sister. Um, and sometimes my brothers join us. So I think it's just really important. And we always go and light a candle before each competition and after every church session. So I do think it's important to know that he has me and like everything's going to be safe, yeah. fine. Just not through gymnastics, but my whole entire life. He's a good guidance, so it's good. So speaking of your whole entire life, let's um, end on this question. After your gymnastics career, what do you plan to pursue? Job, hobbies, <laughs> et cetera. And that is from Joy from yes. the Hatboro Twisters. Yes. Um, <laughs> one day I feel like I did want to become a children's nurse, but I think I'm going to veer off that path and still do something with sports. Um, sports business, sports management, hopefully go to college. Um, 
I still really love UCLA, so if I got the opportunity to go there, um, that's where I would want to go to school. So we'll see. Okay. Well, it'll be exciting no matter yes. what. Yes. So on that <laughs> note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Please join me in thanking right. Simone Biles. Thank you. <laughs>